Hello, I'm Tracy from MeetRx. I'm a MeetRx coach and we're here today with Rose. Hi, Rose. Hi, Tracy. And we would like to hear your success story. Can you tell us or start out by telling us what life was like, what your diet was like, what your health conditions were like before mm -hmm. carnivore? Um, well, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia um, when I was 24 and I just recently turned 35. So it's been a while now, um, which I know that it's becoming more and more common for people at that age to get diagnosed with autoimmune disorders. Um, unfortunately, I have a, quite a few friends that also are, we're all around the same age. They also have autoimmune disorders. It's just becoming more and more common. Um, they run in my family. My mom, uh, we, we're very similar in that way. She has uh, uh, dealt with quite a few um, in her life. And uh, I grew up, I grew up watching her struggle with uh, first of try, t t trying to obtain a diagnosis, find proper treatment, um, and also to just get doctors to believe her at all, that, that she was dealing with the symptoms that she, that she was in fact dealing with. And so uh, I feel like growing up that way, watching that, um, I was sort of predisposed at an early age to try to look for alternative answers to be able to make wise choices that would help me um, not have to maybe repeat the same uh, not mistakes, but to, to experience the same things in my life because, um, we're kind of exactly the same. We look like twins and, and we're just kind of, the joke was always that we're more like sisters than, um, and so I was, I think I was always looking to try to outsmart what might be a possible, um, future. And uh, I got a job at a juice bar when I was in high school uh, at the natural food store in my town where I grew up. And um, I'm not saying that that was a bad thing, but it definitely um, was a, sort of a fertile uh, environment for me to be d exposed to lots of different extreme types of, of dietary lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was working at the time with a young lady who um, was a very, very avid vegan. And any time I said, you know, like my acne, I had really bad acne at the time, really bad acne. And, um, and also I, I felt self-conscious about, I, I felt like I was overweight for my height and I felt I had, I had digestive problems. And so there were already things going on signifying, um, inflammation. Uh, and she just kind of kept reiterating every time we would have a shift together that, you know, being vegan would be the answer that if I would just try it that you know I would see like the 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 but the baby fat would melt away and my acne would go away and like um my digestive problems I was already experiencing symptoms um of uh IBS and um and you know looking into to like medical treatments and stuff for that and and um I, I was already really desperate at a young age. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. Whatever. You know, I don't care if I have to give up, um, you know, stuff I like and, um, and that didn't matter to me. So, um, I, I gave it a shot at like, I think I was uh, 15 and I did it off and on then, um, until I was 26. 
I tried a bunch of different versions of it. I tried really, really extreme um, elimination versions of it. I did the raw vegan thing. I never did fruitarianism um, just because eating too much fruit didn't make me feel good. Um, but yeah, I did a lot of different versions of it. And, you know, I, I have, a, I think like a lot of people who are sort of comfortable with them um, or not comfortable with, but that a lot of people who uh, appreciate instant gratification. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have a, I, I call it um, uh, settlerism. It, it, I feel like it's a mindset where I'm predisposed to settle. So I call it settlerism. Um, and it's, it's like anytime you try something and you kind of get a little bit of relief, all of a sudden you think, okay, this is it. And then you just throw the baby out with the bathwater and there's just no balance in it at all. And so, um, every time I would do some sort of modified, adjusted, you know, weird, extreme, crazy version of, of a plant-based diet, I would have like a month, maybe six weeks of feeling a little bit better in a certain way. Um, and then I would crash really hard. And by the time I was 24 and my fibromyalgia symptoms were super pronounced, I'd already had it for a while. Like I definitely already had it for uh, a year and a half, if not two years. So I probably had it at like 21, 22. And um, it was only by the time I was 24 that I was able to sort of present the checklist and, and it be actually, you know, um, validated. But, um, you know, I just don't now, uh, being carnivore has taught me, A, patience, which I really didn't have before, because real healing takes a lot of patience. Um, and B, that I, I don't, I can't just settle for, you know, a month to six weeks of feeling a little bit better or just feeling like, you know, moderate relief and then you know face on the floor again can't do that yeah. it's not sustainable oh yeah i can see so, that yeah so you're you didn't have to you didn't i know you had uh, fibromyalgia did you have to take any medicines or any medications for any of those things i i i can't speak to anyone else's experience but um you know, I, I moved to New York when I was 17 to go to school and uh, I continued to work in the, in the health food industry the whole time on the side to, to, to uh, you know, make extra money on the side. And for me, um, you know, that whole industry is, is for me, that whole in, working in that industry, eating that way, living that lifestyle, it was just all really um, enabling for me in an unhealthy way um, because uh, there was a lot of allopathic medicine that I refused to ever consider as an option, which mm -hmm. I think in some ways was probably good. But there were other times where it might have actually helped me to be more open-minded um, to, to certain things along the way in, a, in acute moments might have been helpful. Um, but I was extremely close-minded to ever getting any sort of allopathic support at all. I just wanted the diagnosis so that I had the proof, but I didn't want to, to ever do any of the the treatments I had watched my mom, you know, experience what it's like to be on prednisone for a really extended period of time and to take a lot of the other um, really, really strong prescription treatments. Um, and there's a lot of side effects and stuff that I was really scared of, but, you know, um, 
I have just now recently, um, due, due to the inflammation that uh, I had in my lungs as the, uh, as with this most uh, recent respiratory infection I had, I took prednisone for the first time and it totally saved my behind. Like there was, there is a purpose for it in, you know, certain situations and I'm glad to be more open-minded to it now. But um, over the course of, of my diagnosis and, and up until I started carnivore, I never did any of the traditional stuff. I was always trying to do the most natural thing possible, mm -hmm. you know, whether that was traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda or macrobiotic, you know, fermentation. Like I was just trying to do the most natural thing available. Um, but it's funny though, that in the whole course of all of that obsessive researching and reading, like carnivore never really presented itself as an option, which when you're thinking about what is the most natural solution, maybe the way our ancestors have eaten for millions and millions of years might be the smartest option, but I wasn't open-minded to that either. So... <laughs> How did you come to carnivore? Did, how did you implement the diet? And... Um, well, uh, about three and a half years ago, I, uh, I got a job as a dog walker um, part-time to support my, uh, my day. I have like, I, I was until everything got shut down. I was a nightlife performer, cabaret performer. And um, in New York, you can't really be, you know, one thing, like you have to be a, a lot of things. So I got a job as a dog walker and I, I took it as a personal challenge that uh, I would have to build myself up and get into like really, really, really good shape in order to um, be able to take really good care of these dogs and perform at night and do everything else that I was doing at the time. And um, my dog walking route was uh, like on the low end, it was 12 miles a day. And wow. some, of those, some of those dogs were really big and very strong. And, um, and I obviously I wanted to take really good care of them. And, um, so I, I start, I had just started reading about, um, the keto diet and, uh, also at the time I was, this is kind of separate from my carnivore, uh, practice, but I guess, I guess for me personally, not totally separate. I was also doing like a meditation practice at the time that was about um, sort of diving inward and, and evaluating your personal prejudices, evaluating your personal agendas, doing inventories around your motives. And I, uh, at the time when I had started uh, noticing the keto diet and the news and stuff, I noticed some red flags that I was having personal biases against it, mm. you know, and, and I started having to question why, you know, where's that coming from? What is the agenda there? What is my personal agenda in having a bias against this when I really don't know anything about it? Mm. And it seems to be working for some people. Um, and then when I started to get into some of the, um, the really great online lectures and uh, different websites that were sort of collecting data at the time. Um, it, it just made sense to me to try, to try it and see if it could help with my inflammation because I was always, uh, even at my best with veganism, I was always still resting around like a pain level of three mm -hmm. which is I mean I would I would I mean I'll take it if that's all I can get but why settle for that though 
And there were so many people describing their experience saying that, you know, it, it got them back to what they felt like normal had been when they could remember what normal was. And I was like, I have nothing to lose. You know, uh, I had said that when I was 15 years old and I had said I would become vegan. So why, why not? So I did keto for a year and a half and got fat adapted while I was dog walking. And it was great for the first six months. And then I just kind of plateaued. And um, once I plateaued, I started to worry that maybe I'd made a mistake. Maybe, maybe there was only a short-term medical benefit to it and maybe the bottom would drop out and then maybe I'd die of a heart attack, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, even though it, it was so trendy at the time, that was when all of the sort of negative media stuff started rolling out about it, you know, about how dangerous it was and all of this stuff. And, um, and I, uh, when I started really looking into that, it just, it, it didn't, it, it, it seems clearly to be based on bad data. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was only in researching where that was coming from that I came across uh, Sean. Dr. Sean Baker. And once I went down that rabbit hole, it was over. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, he, it was his, a couple of his lectures were the first thing to come across my algorithm. You know, you know how YouTube like reorients itself to whatever you're fixated on at the time. <laughs> it was like his lectures started coming through. And then also um, Nina Teichel's mm they started like generating, you know, her, uh, her lectures in my algorithm. And I went and then, and I saw her, uh, do a debate live here in, in New York. And, um, yeah, I just, it, you know, there's such, I, I think no matter where you are in the sort of, um, like the health oriented, mindset you know broadly uh, uh you know as like a, a a community whether it's it's whether it is veganism or whether it is uh you know carnivore or any any particular elimination diet um or, or protocol there there is this like obsession with ancestral choices mm -hmm. you know ancestral uh, like what, what are our origins? What is truly natural? And, you know, when you're really diving into it and being rigorously honest about the science, it's, there's kind of no debate. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So you did, um, veganism and then, so you did your keto for six months and then I did it, I did it for a year and six months. Oh, a year and six months. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, it, it, uh, I think my body had a lot of healing to do, uh, with being starved for cholesterol. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I tell people about like what my experience was with keto and they're like, what, you know, cause I, I just, Ugh, when I think about the stuff I used to eat, like that's not food, like earth balance, like stuff like I used to eat so much stuff like that. And so when I started doing keto, my body didn't crave meat, it craved butter. And I was eating like giant, I would fill ice cube trays with melted butter and freeze it. And then I would eat those. Mm -hmm. And I would eat like the equivalent of like three sticks of butter in a day and I did that for a long time and I didn't gain any weight I lost weight and I I but I but I really think it was because um you know I had been eating plant-based stuff for so long that that 
my my body i don't know how anyone else's body works i just know how mine works and it was just really malnourished and so getting that cholesterol it was just like put more put you know eat 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 and um i couldn't believe the number of calories i was eating in a day but it was the right thing to do mm -hmm. and um then after like after a year like six months of of like transitioning of fat adapting and and really no like i just wanted to make sure i was doing it safely and mm -hmm. properly um then i started noticing i started craving more red meat so then it was like all of a sudden i didn't want butter or bacon anymore it was like then i wanted two steaks every night you know and so that just kind of happened naturally yeah it's, it's interesting how how you change over a period like you've been carnivore for quite a, a long time two years isn't that correct so I, it's just to me it's surprising that as the longer you're carnivore your taste change and it sounds like that's what happened to you and the and the fats they really they're healing i i was so shocked by the change because uh, i you know a, a lot of people um with i've heard people you know with autoimmune disorders describe uh different you know uh mental health and neurological issues mm -hmm. um you know for, for me a lot of those symptoms started so so early um i don't i didn't really have i think a good baseline um awareness of what what might actually be improved on a mental health Mm -hmm. uh, uh, scale for me like I, I didn't really know what I was missing and um, and then neurologically you know uh, I noticed some really interesting things but I had always had depression I had been diagnosed with depression um, when I was 17 and uh, and it was pretty severe off and on, but uh, I took antidepressants for about six months and I did not like it at all. Um, I have always been in the arts and creative and I felt like when I was taking them, I couldn't tap into any of that at all. So even though it might be dangerous to be unmedicated, um, I just felt like it was more my priority to be in touch with my creativity. Mm -hmm. But um, I just, I think that that's, again, I think that that's that settlerism. Like I will, I will sacrifice a baseline standard of joy and happiness um, or even just serenity in order to um be creative that it's a false choice you don't have to do that and um yeah once i got fat adapted i noticed that my mood was very different i felt like a totally different person and um and then sleep just like just all kinds of stuff that i never would have attributed to I, I, even though I believed in a holistic construct for all of these things, I had never really, I don't think, gone through and evaluated how I actually believed making a commitment like that should in fact change every aspect of my life. You know, when you eat right to actually provide proper nutrition for your health and well-being you are a happier more carefree more well-rested 
more resilient, more capable, more uh, emotionally available, like just everything. You're a different person. And so, um, yeah. Well, these are some of the benefits you've noticed, and I'm sure there's been more. Yeah. Short-term memory. Like, I, that, that was what was real, that really blew my mind when I made the switch to carnivore, like, I would always joke that I had, like, early onset Alzheimer's, which, you know, hopefully not true, um, but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, when I made the switch, I really just, I couldn't believe that I didn't have to check, you know, my phone 18 times on the subway on the way to a location to make sure I knew exactly where I was going. I could check it once, put it away and be present in the moment. You know, that was just not something I was used to and it was very noticeable and it's still that way. It's, it, keto plateaued for me. I know that there are some people who it works for and I think that's awesome, but it plateaued for me, but carnivore has not plateaued for me. So, so it, it helps your fibromyalgia. You've noticed a lot of benefit from that, and and didn't you you say IBS too? You had and yeah, I um I had a like in my late teen years, I was dealing with like they weren't sure if it was maybe Crohn's or the, the, there was there was a lot of back and forth with my doctor at the time about what it could possibly be, and I was also dealing with um interstitial cystitis and a bunch of different things and uh, migraines, just kind of all of the warning flags of, of elevated uh, inflammation. And then in my, my first year of college, I was dealing with hypothyroidism. And it's like, I, I just, I remember at the time, you know, thinking I was so smart because I was being I was being so diligently vegan and like eating so many beans and like thinking I was being so smart, you know, um, so much smarter than it's, I, I look back on this and I just like, it makes me cringe, you know, when I think about, you know, I was like at the time thinking I'm making such smarter choices than my parents than when they were my age, you know, and like, this is going to be so great for me. And like, and also so much smarter than my peers who were out drinking and, um, and like, I didn't, I don't drink. And, and so it's like, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm leading this really abstinent life. And it's like, oh my gosh, am I, am I really like benefiting from this or is it I'm benefiting from the moral superiority of all of this, <laughs> like, you, know, oh, you know, the follies of being young. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, uh, to me, that's, that's like the thing that makes me, that, that makes me, uh, want to like make my eyes roll in the back of my head the most is when I think about how judgmental I used to be. I think that, that, you know, making a, a, com a choice, a commitment for yourself that improves your quality of life, uh, and truly does improve your quality of life that's wonderful. But when you make a choice, um, supposedly based out of that, but really all it does is maybe give you an identity, a sense of identity when you feel insecure or, um, you know, uh, gives you a self-confidence boost, like when you need to feel like you're better than someone else in a morally superior fashion. <sighs> <laughs> that's that's not that's not good that's not okay <laughs> and and that is definitely not going to um support your health in the long run in any way <laughs> i understand <laughs> well, rose it's been it's been an amazing story that you are an amazing journey that you've been on and it's so cool that you found carnivore um can you tell me what kind of food you eat in a day's time Sure. Um, I, uh, I eat, I do eat a lot of ground beef. Um, cause, 
th there was a period of time where I, I did when I first transitioned where I, I was actually craving it raw a lot. And, um, you know, steak tartare is, I mean, it, carpaccio, it's like, like, those are things that are fancy people foods, you know, and so I was just like, well, you know, if I know I'm getting it from a good source, and I know it's okay, it's like, how is that any different? Um, and so I, I did start out that way eating a lot of it raw, I don't really do that so much anymore. Um, I, I do like it rare. Uh, but um, I, I eat a lot of eggs. I'm okay with eggs. Um, I eat a lot of egg yolks and I do, uh, I have a butcher box box subscription. Am I allowed to say that on here? Is that okay? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, and so, um, I get the, like the pork and the beef mailer. Um, and, uh, and so I like eating all of the different cuts. There's a, there's a, a, a butcher shop here in downtown Brooklyn that um, I'm obsessed with. And they have a really great selection of stuff from upstate. Um, they have venison and rabbit and uh, lots of different kinds of ruminants that I'm not as well acquainted with, but I'm definitely open to exploring. So anytime I can try anything that they have to offer in the ruminant category uh i am always trying like to branch out and see they also have stuff like snake and so i haven't gone that far yet but um any of the organs that i can try from any of the different ruminants that they offer mm -hmm. i don't do i i did i was like trying to do the frozen liver gang thing for a while. Um, and uh, I did that for about six months. That was cool. Um, but right now I'm mostly doing just muscle meat and, um, and spleen and um, bone marrow. Like it, it, I, I, I did, I noticed for myself that bone marrow has been a really great, um, component of my carnivore but you know for some people that may not be appetizing or they may not notice a difference or anything but for me I that that I noticed was something that really um, uh, appetite wise like it it satiated me in a different unexpected way because um I mean, I will never get bored of steak ever. I, I, that's what, that's what I think is, I think is the proof in the pudding in, I guess I maybe in the blood pudding, I don't know, um, is that, you know, with most restrictive protocols, you get bored, you know, and this is two years and I'm not bored. I still get really excited, like every time it's time to sit down to eat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the proof. Like the fact that a hamburger, a, a plain hamburger can excite me, plain, you know, nothing else, plain steak, like it's enough. It's delicious. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you include any dairy or you don't do dairy? Um, I, I kind of go back and forth. Like I, that I kind of cycle with, I know some people cycle with eggs. Um, if I, if I, if I'm in a particular, if I'm having a particular episode emotionally where I'm in a really high stress situation and I notice that my, my inflammation is sort of elevated because of emotional factors, then, um, I'll cut out eggs for a little while and I'll cut out dairy. Um, when I notice that my, my immune system is low, like I'm not getting as much sunshine like this, like January and February when it was cold and dark here and there was no, um, and I'll be supplementing with vitamin D, but, um, 
you know, when my immune system is low, I won't do dairy uh, because I definitely feel like feels, I feel like for me, it kind of knocks it down a little bit lower. But um, if I'm feeling good, then like I'll have a little bit of cheese um, and I like raw cheese, but like, you know, if, if, if that's not around and I'm feeling good, I'll still have some cheese. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so, um, are you a member of MeetRx? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. Um, the benefits that you've noticed being a member? Well, um, I am not, uh, I am not a very technologically gifted person, um, and I I really like MeetRx because it kind of just like cuts through all of the the mess of the internet for me, and it makes everything readily available in one place, and it's not me having to go through and create a bunch of of uh, bookmarks and files and stuff that I'm never going to be able to find again on my computer because I'm just not good at that stuff. Um, and also, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool that these sort of informal communities have popped up on all these different platforms, but I think it's really great that it's, that MeterX has created a hub where all of these people can come together and can all, you know, get as well connected with each other as they want. Um, I'm kind of more of a wallflower that way. So I will like just really hang out and like, you know, watch and listen. But if you want to get really crazy involved, you can. And that's really cool that you can make friends with people. Because I, I think because I was coming from a vegan background, I was really used to being the loner in most social situations. Um, where I was the only person who ate a certain way. Like I was the person at the holidays that never ate or was the person at the holidays who only ate one thing um, and who was used to not sort of having that social, that, that social experience. But that is not an obligatory part of making a great choice for your health. Like, you can, you, you don't have to be isolated as a result of it, you know, and that's what's really cool is that um, MeterX provides, it provides the, the avenue for you to get as connected socially as you would like with people that are, that are actually doing the protocol that are just starting, people who have experience. And then also, I, I think one of the best parts that maybe is like, I, I don't know, I'm just now getting into this part, but it's getting connected with the actual providers, the ranchers, mm -hmm. learning all of that end of it. I think that is really exciting because the more, I think the more informed we are about how we get our food, where we get our food and what goes into it and what they need from us, um, as people who, who really require their services in order to live, um, I think that's the next step. And I really think that they've done a good job connecting all of those parts. All right. That's awesome. Oh, I should say I order from Butcher Box too. And we do have <laughs> there, there's like a, a thing on our website that gives members discounts at different places in yeah. box, which boxes one one of those so. I know I saw the deal on D'Artagnan this week and I was like oh my god so yes mm, so good like I I uh I'm I'm excited I'm, I can't wait to see what the next deal is because like my freezer is like it's like scary how exploding it is because it's a very small freezer but like uh I'm like the next deal like I'm gonna have to find ways to like shove things in the weirdest like because <laughs> you know it, it's uh, it's it, it's it's too good it's too good to pass up <laughs> yeah. 
It's what's so your favorite um what's your favorite uh thing that you get in the month like the thing that you look forward to the most in your butcher box um the ribeyes but their pork is really good have love you tried them. pork i love their sausage and their bacon both oh my god yeah i know i just did one of their um their bone in pork butts and it's like oh my god it's heaven <laughs> and i love that it, it i love I mean, I don't know about how anyone else does their carnivore, but for me, like, there's the exciting part, which is the eating it, and then there's also the other exciting part, which is the saving of everything. So, like, when I make the pork butt from Butcher Box, like, making sure to save all of the lard that is cooked into the bottom of the pan. Like I have jars and jars and it smells so good. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to use this on other stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love getting the box at my door. I can't wait to unload it. <laughs> I know, me too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rose, so much for sharing your story. And I know it'll help a lot of people. I appreciate oh. it so much. Thanks so much for asking. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited to, uh, to be part of like, um, to be part of a movement that is actually so many different types of people healing themselves mm -hmm. and enjoying their lives. And um, I will be uh, contributing recipes and um will be i'm still working on my coaching certification but um hopefully by the end of this month i'll be up awesome awesome yeah, yeah that's why i became a coach because i just want to help people and, and there's a lot of people who need help with the help yeah. so thanks so much I'll, I'll talk to you soon thank you it was so nice to meet you nice meeting you too bye bye, bye. Thank <laughs> you.